When I set out to make this video, the idea, the idea was simple. I wanted to see what it would take to put a newly minted NFT into a Unity 3D game engine. This video contains specific points and on the off chance that the Anchor development team stumbles on this fresh episode, time codes will be provided in the description below. Wait a minute, are you new here? Did you stumble onto this video? Welcome to Unusual Due Diligence. I am your host, Poseidon, the mighty god of the sea, and it is the spirit of Poseidon that brings to life me, the talking milkshake. In today's fresh episode, come with me on the adventure ride that began with a question, and that would later have me sit back and ponder the future of, well, everything. Every story begins somewhere. This episode began with this tweet. I posted on Twitter this real-time update of the continuation of the NFT idea for the channel. But really, this is me trying to just dig in even deeper into the cryptocurrency and blockchain projects I tend to follow on the channel itself. My first step was simple enough. What is the easiest way to mint an NFT? I had two key requirements. First, I wanted to ensure it was easy for a viewer like you to be able to see the NFT. I didn't want to try and figure out hosting of the content or anything overly technical. Second, I was looking for speed. What was the fastest option for me to do this? It just so happens that a product manager for OpenSea is making the news for running an insider trading scam. Like many of you, I've heard of OpenSea in the news but have never done anything with it. So I changed all of that when I signed in and created what's shown on the screen, my very first NFT ever. According to OpenSea, there was exactly one of these NFTs minted. Now, what's rather peculiar about NFT is something that I didn't quite understand initially. That is, I posted this exact same image on Twitter, and I even have this one frame in the video now as an NFT. So what is it that a person buys when they buy an NFT? Is it a receipt or is it something more? The answer to that question would be filled in later, once I started to see how the pieces could fit together. So let's pause that thought for a moment. If you're curious about my thoughts on where NFT fit based on this experience, see the time code in the description of this episode. Okay. In this part of the video, I'm going to cover trials and tribulations of the Anchor SDK. I mentioned before that I use Unity 3D, enough to be dangerous, and so I'm going to caveat everything I'm about to say with, quote, hey, I'm a milkshake that doubles around, end quote. And there are some small unanswered questions that I have with the Unity SDK for Anchor along with some general feedback. First, making use of the Anchor SDK flipped on the light bulb for why Anchor is even more amazing than I already gave it credit for. It's about efficiency, and efficiency often wins. You see, Anchor didn't know which chain I meant an NFT on, nor did I have to provide any meaningful insight into Anchor about those particulars. From the perspective of a single entity doing work on a blockchain, this concept that I can ignore all the technical detail of how the blockchain works and just focus on the parts I'm interested in well, that's just immensely huge. I thought over an example, and the one that occurs to me is this. Using Anchor is a lot like driving a car down a road. Imagine if you had to build a car each time, from scratch, when you needed to get from one place to another. Instead, Anchor puts you in the driver's seat and says, quote, here you go, boss, end quote. But here's where things get weird. And to be clear, I don't even think this is a fault on Anchor, but it is something that isn't well explained. The Anchor documentation for the gaming SDK needs updated to cover the simple things that literally everyone on Earth will want to do with NFT. It's super simple because there's four ideas that just need covered that aren't covered today. Those four are CRUD, or CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And delete in the context of an NFT likely just means transfer. So let's get to the crux of it. You see, when you pour over the Anchor SDK docs, as much as I did, looking for simple answers, the GitHub docs really need to address basic use cases to be effective. Simply down to the level of a person that can figure it out from there, but needs those happy path contexts to really put it all together. The assumption in the provided Anchor examples is that the entire NFT application and ecosystem is native to the app. But that's not going to be the case. There are places like OpenSea that have a broad and existing ecosystem, and frankly, Anchor somehow needs to explain how that works. So I mentioned the crux of those four things, create, read, update, and then delete or transfer. So let's just go back to the problem, which I assume is a pretty common use case in the future. Quote, okay, I just used the easy mint process of OpenSea, and now I want to make use of that NFT and have it showing in Unity 3D app somehow, end quote. Now, here is where things get a little weird, but also pretty fascinating. The Anchor SDK, if you explore the wearable NFT section, 
has a specific call out here to infira.io. I have that code on the screen now. Now, I believe this is in the context of Anchor to be a result of the history of this gaming SDK project. After all, shouldn't all the SDK calls for anything infrastructure related just channel right through Anchor? After all, Anchor just popped into news recently about their views on centralized providers such as Infura. But there's more tiny issues here with the Anchor SDK from the perspective of someone just trying to get his milkshake portrait to show on a screen. And also one idea that frankly blew my mind. Let's pause for a moment and go over what I'll just call Amusings of Milkshake. First, the Wallet Connect library that the Anchor Gaming SDK uses just doesn't support enough wallets. As is, I had to transfer the NFT around in order to enable a finally viable wallet. I will say it's pretty incredible that I can pair my phone with the Unity app that, well, that it works. And that's magic. The confirmation exchange between Anchor.com is using HTTP and not HTTPS as shown on the screen. I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to deliberately use HTTP and not HTTPS, but it seemed like HTTPS should be ticketed here and a fix applied. There are all these calls to YAR2 that uh, just don't make sense to me. Anchor should have all of these endpoints swapped over to Anchor.com, if for no other reason than to raise the trust level. And last, the documentation needs updated for people who make games and just use the Unity game engine for building their own small apps. Not everyone, including this guy of the sea, is a blockchain technology genius. Those are four very fixable and easy to rectify things. But let me tell you what I found as a huge opportunity sitting here in Anchor. To understand what I mean, you have to be aware of something Anchor recently pushed out called the Anchor Advanced API. And given the story so far, you can appreciate this one little section here called NFTs by owner. That is, get NFTs by owner. So first off, the gaming SDK should absolutely incorporate the advanced API from Anchor. I can only assume the Anchor gaming SDK team is independent of the team working on the advanced API. The first small technical problem is that the Anchor C Sharp generated examples provided by the advanced API just don't work out of the box in the Unity game engine. Instead, and keep in mind I have no idea what I'm doing here, uh, after all I was animated to life by Poseidon, and next thing you know, I have a YouTube channel? It's been a weird lot in life as a talking milkshake. Where was I? Oh yeah. So the code on the screen, uh, that's an example of what it looks like to convert over from the rest sharp example that's provided by the generated code, and then how that really works in Unity. Having said that, as I was thinking over how this SDK might one day work in the context of Unity, it was frankly kind of mind-blowing. Imagine having one block of code that just makes it easy for some tinkerers like myself to build apps off the blockchain without even understanding how any of it's connected. Someday, Big Enterprise will make use of all of this and Anchor will take us on a whole new journey. We are now at the part of the journey where we need to springboard a bit from Unity and Anchor and instead go off and discuss OpenSea. You, uh, see. The problem I ran into in this experiment is one I did not anticipate. Anchor seems convinced that I have no NFT associated to my wallet with the code I've written so far. Yet the wallets do hold NFT, and they both have convinced me that the NFT does exist. So what is happening? Well, in trying to figure this out, that would take me into the weird world of OpenSea. Going back to the beginning of this episode, I mentioned that when I minted the NFT to do this experiment, that aside from the painfully high gas prices, the idea was to find the easiest path possible to create an NFT and then see what happens. And I would learn that the OpenSea interpretation of the ERC-1155 standard is, let's call it interesting. First off, the NFT I created has two key parts. First is the standard looking Ethereum address that I have on the screen. The second part is this impossibly large number that would later learn is called a uint256. If you're technically minded, that probably means something to you. For the rest of us, it's just this huge number that I see on the screen. The problem is that there's no good way to get this token information loaded on Anchor. And in fact, if you go looking for Anchor and OpenSea related implementations, including searching the Discord, Reddit, other technical threads, Twitter, my shoebox, odds are you're going to end up right back here with this video in the search results. It was incredibly frustrating not be able to find any way to see an OpenSea NFT to pop into Unity. After all, that was going to be the big reveal for the episode. Here's what I learned in the process. If you go to OpenSea, you'll find out that they have their own documentation, and that documentation recommends use of Infura as well for making certain API calls related to their transactions. Compare the two code blocks on the screen. I think that's pretty interesting. Luckily, just someone trying to demonstrate the other type of ERC NFT that's possible. I think that's ERC 721, but I'm still working through that. 
The idea that I had instead was this. In sole pursuit of trying to get that OpenSea NFT in Unity, at this point I realized I couldn't even find the token on Etherscan, and I would later learn why. You see, OpenSea's multi-token implementation makes it more or less impractical for anyone not using their proprietary API to look up a minted token. It was at that point that I said some not nice things out loud. So I went to OpenSea and decided that I would just go about figuring out how to use the OpenSea API to pull in the token information so I could display the image. Clearly, that is a pretty straightforward operation. And then looking over the documentation, as shown on the screen, I see that it probably is, but there's a catch. The catch is that you need an API key now from OpenSea in order to make use of the OpenSea API service. And that's not a significant problem. In the course of doing this channel, I've acquired all sorts of weird magical artifacts, including API keys for sites like this. Except when I went to generate the API key, it said I'd likely have to wait for up to five business days. It was at this point, once again, I said some not nice things out loud in regards to OpenC. These episodes come out every three days, and that's certainly challenging when you consider that I don't batch them up ahead of time. I kind of like the time pressure. That's a thing. So now allow me to wrap all this up with some parting thoughts. I started this experiment out by minting an NFT on OpenSea using their most convenient option, and then in the process learned that I am forever shackled to the OpenSea API in a way that I can't even get access to without a week-long signup. Anchor shows compelling progress in their mission to unify all the blockchains into an easy-to-use interface, but lack the necessary components to engage with OpenSea in any meaningful way. Meanwhile, I did find a few API and capabilities with the Anchor SDK mind-blowing and realized if I had just minted the NFT in Anchor or on Ethereum without OpenSea, I probably would have been fined. Yet in the process of all this, I gained a new insight in the NFT that just didn't occur to me before. Prior to this episode, I always considered NFT to be the moral equivalent of selling receipts from the corner drugstore. You know, the one there are memes about on Reddit with their mile long receipts. I just assumed that an NFT was basically that one clever scam to sell receipts from one person to the next. Yet, after I started tinkering around with the technology, I realized it allowed me to do something that I'm not sure anyone's ever really seen before. And I see now and up close why so many game companies are so interested in what this technology provides. But really, I don't even think this is game technology. I think this is bigger than that. This is something fundamentally new. And I don't even think this is something about VR or a metaverse per se. But you have to look at this from the lens of how digital transformation applies to institutions. With an NFT, it is now quite literally possible to have a game asset or digital asset be easily portable at the data layer from one app to another app in the most important way possible. By removing the need for anyone involved to build security, API, platform, infrastructure, or anything else from one company to another. Quite literally, if you have something like the Anchor SDK, you can embed a digital asset from one project to another. And with Anchor, it could be across any number of chains. That is mind blowing. You see, I covered in a prior video how the Unity game engine extends from games to films, but also to other business products such as interactives, architecture design, and far more. This idea of a world where NFT isn't a receipt, but rather enables a store of value of digital data across individual actors in that system. And that enablement means that any actor could potentially see their data activated in a fun, creative, or even high value ways without anyone having to build new API endpoints. Man. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't an end to APIs. In fact, the world is going to see even more of those. They're like cockroaches, as industry continues to specialize and grow. Instead, what technology like cross-chain NFT allow for is this brand new capability we've just never seen before. The nearest example I could assemble for this video involves a web page. Take for a moment how with a website, you can see a web page on your phone or on your PC or in VR, or even on your portable game player. Now, take it one step further. Instead of a web page, it's a digital object, like a chair, a game character, an insurance policy, or even a digital deed to a property. Imagine all of that powered by a decentralized project governed by the broader community, and powered by its own token economics with the project, well, let's say Anchor. What's the future hold? It's hard to say, but I do know this. This is unusual due diligence, I am Poseidon, the mighty god of the sea. In today's episode, we tried NFT and shared the journey so far. Make ways, my friends.